Where was this phrase made popular? Easy trivia question. If I tell you, I would have to kill you. If you said Top Gun, I think you are correct. Not that I'm some trivia king. I'm not. But I think that's where it came from. Great movie, by the way. Top Gun. And incidentally, check this out. I have a Tomcat in 170 second scale sitting on the reviewing table. This is a plastic ready-made model. I forget the brand. It was inexpensive. There's no way a Tomcat would have that much ordnance. He wouldn't be able to take off. Holy cow, that's a lot. High drag, too. Maybe you'd have the Phoenix missiles, but I don't know about the AIM-9s and the AIM-7s as well. Anyways, you may or may not see this jet, very cool by the way, in the WRV. Now I do out of genre reviews. I've been doing it for a couple years now. You guys know this, i.e. if I'm doing a gun review, I may talk about a knife. If I'm doing a knife review, I may talk about a gun. And I just kind of crisscross my content flow like that. I've been doing it for a long time. And guys tend to like it. You know, it's kind of fun. I'm not really a gun channel, knife channel, whatever channel. I'm a gear adventure channel, as you know. And here we're going to talk about a watch for sure. I was doing, I think, a gun review. And I showed my watch that I was wearing. I totally forgot which one it was. I, I do it all the time. I'm going to cop some attitude for this WRV, namely a Wegener attitude. Previously reviewed. I think I reviewed it like uh, six months ago. I just still haven't edited and put out the review, but it'll come out sometime along with others. I think I did the Wegners and a couple of Victorinoxes in one WRV. Great watch, by the way. I love this high value sapphire coated crystal, 42 millimeter quartz. This is a European version. Leather strap, red highlight stitching, logo buckle clasp. Cool. But I wasn't wearing this when I was doing the gun review. I think it's a gun review. I was wearing the top, the topic of this review, a Casio and the guy contacted me via Patreon. Thanks to my Patreon guys, by the way, much appreciated. Keeping the channel going. And he goes, dude, that watch you had on was awesome. What was it? And we had to kind of send an exchange back and forth talking about, well, which, which video was it? And we narrowed it down. And I did mention the review that this watch was coming up for the review. It is the EQB 800. This one right here. Just put on the wrist. Oh man, that's a great, great, great looking watch. Big fan. And so my friend, I'm sorry I forget your name, whoever I was talking to, here it comes. The Casio EQB 800 review by Nothing Fancy. It will serve probably for the EQB 900 series as well. These are actually smartwatches. So they will connect to your phone through their app. So it's not like an Apple Watch that does it automatically. I may mention that again. You have to kind of sync it up yourself, but it is a smartwatch and it does have some smart functions. There are a whole bunch of such watches out there though. This is just one of them. Here's a, a magazine article I pulled out with an EQB 900 and that's what the 900 looks like. So the EQB 900 Delta Bravo 2A, it also is gonna connect through Casio smartphone link system automatic time zone, daily day, uh, daylight savings time settings adjusted. All the things this one has, the face on the 900 is going to be different. It's not inexpensive, about the same price. They're about 300 bucks. Both of these street price will be a little bit less. I think I got this one in Amazon and it's not a loaner from Casio or a distributor. I'm an independent reviewer. I just generally buy and sell kind of like consumer reports. I buy and sell, it's expensive, and that's where that Patreon money goes these days. Not just for watches, but you're looking at it, the flow. The heart and soul of this watch review though, in my estimation, is not its smartphone capabilities or its linking capabilities with your smartphone. To me, it's how it looks. That is a gorgeous looking watch, the EQB series, where it's a 9, 800 series, and there might be some others out there that I'm missing, but they will look similar. Striking appearance, striking. I, I am a huge fan of how it looks primarily. It's not a small watch. So if you have like six and a half inch wrists, you need to put it on first or buy it from Amazon somewhere where you can return it if it doesn't fit. The dimension here, not including the pushers, I think right around this dimension is 50 millimeters. It is 14 millimeters in thickness. 
lug to lug 53 millimeters for this EQB 800. It's also a little bit heavy with its bracelet, which I absolutely love, incidentally, 6.4 ounces, perhaps the heaviest watch I've reviewed to date. That's, to me, that's stout. That's a lot, lot of metal. This is the variation EQB 800 Delta Bravo dash one ACF link below, by the way, if I didn't say so. Now I'm a big SAWC guy, you know that. Size and weight constraints, huge. I mean, I preach about it all the time. I do admit my mm, hypocrisy a little bit when it comes to some watches, not all watches. This is one of them. I mean, heck, that, that's like a very heavy tactical knife and I'm putting it on my wrist and I, I'm giving it a pass. Let me say this, so I give it a pass in EDC with rule of law. So in other words, when society's operating, I don't need to carry a loadout. I'm not a military operator where weight is super, super crit critical. That's when I'd carry a heavy watch. Guys who say that you know military operators go into battle with these big honk and whatever watches, uh, MTM or whatever tactical watch you want to uh, come up with, I just don't believe it. Uh, all the real military oper operators that I transported as a US Air Force pilot, almost all of them had G-Shocks on. Lightweight, durable, inexpensive, don't care if it gets busted, G-Shocks. So 6.4 ounces, ah, that's a little bit stout. But what do I get in return? I get second cool, man. That's what I get. It is so excellent looking. I'll start with the tachymeter bezel, of which I will never use, nor will you. It's just for looks. But the, the striking blue color and the inlaid numbers on it are gorgeous. I would really love it if it was just a standard dive timing bezel. It would be much more useful. It is non-rotatable, of course, tachymeter style. You can look that up if you're interested in what that does. And it's just striking. I mean, and then you have a high polished 316L stainless steel case, sign crown. You have two pushers on this side, plus your crown, which is protected. Coming around to this side, there's your Bluetooth button to remind you. And I think it's labeled in function on the back of the case. It is. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit and two pushers on this side, which are indented a little bit downturn lugs just a little bit not drilled through and We have high contrasting polish and brushing going on on the case So there's just a quick look at the case and how look great it looks and then let's look at the face. I Love the colorations in this variation. I showed you that 900. It's about the same it has that blue has the white markers the chapter ring is precise with graduations in there. Um, you have a T and an F here. I think that's for doing splits on your timing. I'll talk about that in the manual here in a little bit, if I remember. And we have the white raised markers. Actually, they're not white, they're polished. Which generally, I'm not a big fan of polished hands. Definitely not. And markers, I don't like them polished, except when they're legible like they are here. So they're super legible and they time it, tie in thematically to this. So the polish right here. The blue coloration on the seconds hand is perfect. The hands are perfect. So they're clean, they're not outlined in black. And so they are stark against the black background, which is your solar cell because this is a solar powered watch. And we have our battery indicator right here. It's showing full because I put it in the sun probably two weeks ago and it's still going great. So this is a Casio Edifice solar powered timepiece. So excellent. Uh, now it can get a little bit confusing understanding what it does. You would think this watch has a ton of functions. I don't think it does. And to be honest with you, this is what no one will say on, when they review this watch. I don't think you're going to use them because this is some philosophy. If this is tied to your, uh, your iPhone, which it is to mine. And let me just show you how that works. So I already paired it and there's pairing in the manual is the R is when it goes to pairing right here. And then when it's paired in a different mode, it'll point down to the Bluetooth symbol. I think the 900s is a little bit more clear. Look at the 900 dial. So it'll have the Bluetooth symbol here and the R for pairing down here. I think that's less confusing than the 800 style in this variation. But what I was gonna say, and I'm gonna open up the app right now, 
here's the app, the Casio app. Um, first, I'm gonna, it's already connected, so I already did the pairing. And then I'll, like it says here, hold down the lower left pusher. That's I always call it by position, just for a second and a half. And then it should say time is getting adjusted. Really cool when you fly around the world. There you go. So it's synced to your phone, basically. So now it's completely synced to your phone. It's balls on accurate, the time is. It's gonna adjust for DST, it's gonna adjust your date, everything. It's basically gonna mimic your phone. And that's a huge benefit to me. When I travel, if I pop into different time zones and I'm still, I still wanna wear an analog watch, huge. But what I was gonna say is all the other functions that I, I will share with you, I don't think you're gonna use because you have your iPhone, you have your smartphone if you hook it up to something else. This is what you're used to using and if you're like me, you're swapping out your timepieces all the time and it's hard to remember, oh, I have an Edifus EQB 800 on it. For instance, I can do a stopwatch function, which is, by the way, switched to by this upper left pusher, if I'm not mistaken. There's three modes. So we have timekeeping mode, which it's in right now. See how it's showing Sunday? It is Sunday today. Uh, so it's showing days of whatever day of the week it is. By the way, there's your date window. It's just getting ready to get occluded by the uh, minutes hand. It is somewhat recessed. It's a negative display. However, it's white lettering on a black background. So I think it's pretty legible. Again, the white hands, extremely legible. But we're talking about going mode to mode. There's three basic modes if I get it right. Maybe I get it wrong. But we hit, we're in timekeeping mode. And now we go to stopwatch mode where that mode dial goes to the triangle. This will go to the 12 o'clock position, your second time uh, sub dial right here. And then you just start it with this right here. So now we're timing. And then we have this, this going back and forth, I guess, to just let us know we're in a timing phase. And then I think your sub dial down here will track your minutes and hours if you keep it going long enough. But I, I, I don't know if I'd use it, to be honest with you, you could. And there are some other timing functions. I mean, it gets kind of complicated how, how much stuff there is to do. Uh, I'm trying to think which. It'll do stopwatch settings, target values, fastest splits. Go to page seven and page 12 in the manual. Check it out if you care. Okay, and then we'll stop it. I think this will reset, no. There we go, now we're reset. We're still in timing mode though. And then we press it once more and it should go to alarm mode. So now you see the little blue hand pointing to alarm and that's it. So we've gone from alarm, days of the week, stopwatch and your mode is showing. And this top thing is for your timing, your splits or whatever the heck it is. Something you'll never use by the way. And then we go back to day of the week. I'm sorry, that was alarm. There we go, day of the week. To me, that's a little confusing. I'm not gonna lie because it's not intuitive and it's a little bit different. Most Casios, their mode selections right down here, isn't it? Yeah, it totally is. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all, again, all the timing functions that it has. I think most guys will just use it as an analog timepiece, which I do, that syncs up to your phone. And it's totally accurate. Now, something really cool is we have a six o'clock dial, which you can set for any time zone. That's huge. I like that. So I'm just running what I have, like a couple hours ahead right now. But the overall look is super technical and super dressy. I don't know if dressy is the right word. Uh, maybe technical, we'll just leave it at that. So I've had a lot of compliments as I've worn this. By the way, running around with it, guys just like, oh man, that's cool. Uh, and a lot of the younger folks like millennials and iGens, they are into smartwatches and they kind of know what they are. So they may not be into G-Shock, some are, the coolest ones are for sure, but they kind of know the edifices and ones like this. And it kind of strikes up a conversation. How do you like it? And I tell them, you can see some normal wear that I've put on this one. I've had this one for, I think coming up on a year or so. So it's been in the rotation and I ha have my kids help me test the watches. So it's not just me wearing them. I'll have Last Suspect and uh, Tactical Doodle. They wear them, they're both watch guys. And so they help me a lot. Uh, one thing I do that I'm seeing more and more of and I always advocate it, advocate it is I do wear a smartwatch in addition to my analog timepiece. Uh, right now I'm running a Series 2 Apple Watch. This is another reason why I wouldn't use a timing function on this. I showed you as me accessing it on the phone, but in reality, 
what I do is just access it right here on the Apple Watch. I sometimes call it an iWatch. <laughs> Uh, so here's a timer function right here. I can just set whatever custom I want. Um, and then I just start it and it starts counting down. And then it'll ring through my Apple Watch and my phone at the same time. I can pause, reset. It's just so quick to do. Uh, same for uh, stopwatch functions. If I get to the home screen super quick. Reset. So here's my stopwatch function on on the Apple Watch. So to me, it's a lot more intuitive, easy to use. The downside is I always have to make sure this is charged up. Sometimes it'll die. I find the Apple Watch batteries from Series 2 on actually last very good. I don't have many complaints. I'm getting easy, easy two days out of them. And I've had this one for two years. Two years. Okay, back to the EQB 800 though. We talked about the colorations, the hands, the bezel. Let's look at the band, band now. Actually the bracelet strap shown some normal wear and tear, which you can expect yours will as well, and you should welcome it unless you're planning on selling it because it just shows you where your timepiece is. So this is a solid link, I'm pretty sure. I'm looking to make sure it's not folded. Solid link, some guys really, really love the solid links. Um, I don't mind folded hollow links because it's lighter. That's one reason why this watch is 6.4 ounces and I have sized it for myself which was a hassle. And when you size it, you're gonna actually knock out these little pins right here with your watch tools and make sure there's little tiny collars that retain those pins in there. Make sure you don't lose them. There should be one on each side. You'll take out your link, size it, test fit it, size it, test fit it. It's a pain. But once you get it down, uh, you wanna put it on a little bit loose, by the way. I think most of you watch guys know this, but if you're new, don't have it super tight because I find with bracelet straps, your wrist will swell Mine's seven and a half inches in diameter, normal size wrist. And see how it's kind of loose now? If I wear this like an hour, hour later, we come back, it's gonna be, my wrist will swelled up a little bit. It'll size perfectly. There's your logo, sign clasp, and really nice. So double retention clasp, no diver extension on this. You don't need it, I don't think. You can micro adjust it with three positions on this clasp portion here. That's really easy to do if you don't know what I'm talking about. So once you've adjusted the band, let's say it's too tight, too loose, you can come back here, just use a pointed end of your watch tool and just push that in. There's a little spring bar right there and it'll go back into those holes and you can adjust it. So that's, most, most watches have that, the good ones do. The polished surfaces, again, are really cool, but the downside is, and you're looking at it right here, and this is one reason I waited for the review is to really test the watch, um, you're just gonna show scratches. Uh, brushed or sandblasted surfaces, I think sometimes are a little bit more durable. This is not a sapphire crystal on the EQB 800. It's actually mineral, but it's wearing my armor suit crystal protector on there, which you can't even tell, can you? Yeah, I put it on all my watches. Looking at the case back, and I'm not gonna, I don't know if you can see it that well. There we go, that's a good enough one. So I told you it has like labeling, so here you got split reset right here, start stop. That's for your timing functions. It's almost like this is a yachting race watch type of motif on this one. And then on this side, sorry if it's not focusing super great. There's your connect button also labeled with the Bluetooth. We took a look at that earlier. And then your mode button, which strangely doesn't follow the, <laughs> the conventions that Casio put forth in all their other watches. And then you'll see the model, the module number, which I think I wrote down, if I didn't, you'll be able to see it right there. Yeah, in the box. Always look for the box, that's your module number. And that's a really important because to get that manual that I referenced earlier, you're gonna go uh, type that in, you'll go Casio manual PDF in your module number or something like that and it'll come up and tell you how to run it. Now, as far as the battery goes, uh, it lasts forever, I mean, if you just wear it daily and it's exposed to light, you're never, this is like a maintenance-free watch. Another huge benefit to the Edifice watches. Huge benefit. Um, just charge it up in the sun and I would say probably twice a year is what you'd have to do. I don't wear this all the time. I have a ton of watches. I'm a watch reviewer of sorts and so I cycle them through. But this is a watch I could wear every day and be completely happy. The EQB 800, it is insane. The cool thing is too, if you get tired of this heavy band, uh, you can take off these case shrouds, which are held in by the spring bar. You come in here, you can see your spring bar is exposed here. 
and take the heavy solid link metal bracelet off and experiment with some NATO straps with some Zulu straps. That's fun. I mean, dude, just changing the straps out just completely changes your watch. Guys will say so in the comment. I, I mean, if you have a watch and you find yourself not wearing it and you look at it and you go, wow, I really like this watch and yet you're not wearing it, it's probably the strap and you may not even know it. So swap the strap out, experiment with it and you'll be surprised. I'm gonna show you one example to show you another uh, of what I'm talking about. So this is the infantry watch, a Bell & Ross homage. They don't even make this blue anymore. So this is a, basically a $25 watch. When I bought it on Amazon, the blue variation is bye-bye. So it's a Bell & Ross homage. I mean, I've been wearing this and people come up and go, oh man, that's a sweet Bell & Ross. And I don't tell them otherwise. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. How much is it? And I just, oh, I don't know, like 4,000. They're like, oh man, that's a lot. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, tell them it's, it's an homage. This is also wearing my armor suit uh, crystal protector on it. This is just a cast metal case. Go watch my infantry watch review. They have the black and white version still. It does have a negative display LCD in it, blah, blah, blah. But the point is this, is I put on a strap designed for a Sunto core. It's a 24 millimeter bright blue silicone and dude, it transformed this watch. Look at that. It came with that big goofy Bell & Ross type silicone strap that I just don't like. It's just suffocating. This one is still silicone, so it, it's sweat proof, summer proof. Uh, I mean, I'm excited to wear this watch again. Excited. It'll be the same way with EQB. Now, competitive options. EQB 900, 800, uh, get whichever one you want. You'll be happy. I'm super happy with either one. I, I'm guaranteeing it. You're just going to love the watch. Uh, I, I think the highlight, again, is how it looks. It's just a gorgeous watch. It has perfect hands, in my estimation. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this. I'm glad I remembered. Uh, it does not have a backlight, unless I missed it. Uh, it doesn't, uh, but it has perfect hands and it has uh, hand position correction. You can go into the manual if you want to know how that is. And it has standard illumination. So this is not, um, how should I say? It's not like super Luminova. It's okay. It's okay. So we'll take a quick look at how it looks. And, and I just barely charged it up. There you go. And, uh, you know, I've got the hour hand underneath the minutes hand, but you get the idea. It looks good right now. You know, an hour from now, it's still readable, but I think Seiko and Citizen Loom is better. Just to be totally honest, it's better. The, but the looks are killer. I mean, the blue highlights, the marker set, the blue seconds hand. I think you saw in that 900 had an orange second hand or red. That's cool too. I'm super picky, by the way, on my hands these days. I just don't like thin cathedral hands. I don't like syringe hands. That's just me. I don't. Great looking watch. I think that's the basics. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you is this little mini dial right here. That's actually for your second time zone in the six o'clock sub dial. And it's telling you if you're in PM or AM. You don't set that. It just slaves when you set it. And again, refer to the manual and see how to do it. Now, before the end, end the review, holy cow, coming up on 25 minutes. Fun though, real fun, is I'm gonna show you another Casio watch. You've been looking at it. Did you see this one right here? Look at how close this watch looks to the EQB 800. It is another genuine Casio product. product. It is an MTD 320, if I'm getting that right. MTD 320, and this is not a smartwatch, but it has three subdials and it is gorgeous, and it's only about 55 bucks. Non-rotating bezel, doesn't rotate, orange seconds hand, chronograph functions, sunburst dial, different marker set, different depth. I mean, that's another thing about the EQB uh, system or face, I should say, is that it has a really deep three-dimensional face, very similar to like a Mudmaster, uh, maybe the Marine Master any of the Master of G series. They go really deep in the face and they have just a lot of character. This is more flat, more traditional, but at first glance, there's some similarities. This is a smaller watch still though, the MTD 320, but look at the handset too. The hands are almost identical, if not better than the EQB. They're just super, super white against the, the blue face, super legible. This is battery powered, solar powered, smart watch, not a smart watch, just to be clear. These are hollow links in this bracelet on the MTD 320. I hope I'm getting that name right. I think it is. MTD, yep, MTD 320. So these are hollow links. 
And I love this strap, I do. It's lighter weight than the EQB strap, has the same level of adjustment right here. A little easier to adjust, micro adjustment as well. This is a great Casio watch. Great Casio watch, I, I just love it. Um, which one would you prefer, nothing fancy? <laughs> <laughs> They're both excellent. Uh, this though, I, I love it for traveling. This is a great traveling watch. It's a great second cool watch, solar powered. I, I really, all the solar powered timepieces I've been running have been doing great. I have found, don't let them die on you though. They don't like it. Here comes another one just coming into inventory. This is a Mudmaster GG1000. Uh, not solar timepiece, by the way, it's battery powered but uh, I'm showing it to you to kind of illustrate the point of the deep face that they do on their higher end pieces. So this is around a $200 watch, maybe 250, depending on where you get it. This is a new coloration. Look at that, the gray strap, blue subdial, pure white hands against a negative LCD display. Oh my gosh, that is outstanding. This is the one alpha eight, I think this one right here. Got to wrap it up. So this is the watch show, the edifice EQB 800. Uh, and I told you which one it was, the Delta Bravo Dash 1 ACF. Highly recommend it. It's going to get it an extremely high likability scale below, even though it is a more expensive Casio. I think you'll be able to sell it if you wear it and just get sick of it. Albeit, if it has normal wear and tear on it, it's going to cost you some money. That's pretty normal. See you around.